I got it right this time. Hello, everybody. I am Kevin Deanna Jones, and you're watching the Kevin Deanna Jones Show. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, this is my second official show. It is my third time doing live. Um, hello, everyone. I'll give you a second to join in. Um, today is going to be a real fun one. Not that they haven't been thus far. Um, but it's going to be not really movie-based, but we're going to talk about the community. We're going to talk about you all. We're going to talk about, um, you know, things that go with this that's not just talking about the movies and loving the movies, which is going to be a really, a really fun time. And my first guest, uh, only guest of the show, I'm only doing one guest at a time because I feel like going from how we did with Daniel last week, we can just talk and talk and talk with every one of these people. So uh, one person each week, it's going to be fantastic. I may take a break every now and then. Um, I only get two days off a week, and it's nice to relax and just do nothing. Not that this is a big deal to do, but um, it is nice to just uh, zone out and just kind of stare at the wall, you know, every now and then. It's nice to do on a good Monday night. Um, but uh, it's going to be a good talk with him. Uh, it's going to be a fantastic talk. It's Cosplay Fitness, Kirk Brackman. He is someone that, at the very beginning of all this, I watched him on YouTube quite a bit, uh, as I'm sure many of you did. We uh, we all kind of turned to that thing, um, and man, there's a lot of people on there that have a lot of great advice and just are fun to watch, and he was one, I watched his videos many, many times um, in getting into all this. He, uh, before I really got to be friends with him, I, I wrote to him right after I cracked my first whip. I was like, hey man, I, I, I did it, look, 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 I did a video of it. I was so proud of myself, and he was the first person I thought of. Um, hello, everybody. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Oh, we're up to 16 people. That's not bad. Um, I did get contacts in, so I can actually see a lot better. And it was kind of cool today, because I went, not with this all, but just the hat and the jacket. And I walked in a brand new place that I've never been to before. And this guy immediately goes, I love your hat. And I go, well, thank you very much. And I just, I, I don't really launch into the talk, but boy, oh boy, I did uh, today. I just said, you know, I just, I don't uh, tell, tell everyone this, but I do indie cosplay. Um, and here, take a look. And I showed him, and he might be watching right now, as a matter of fact. That'd be pretty cool. He did join uh, the fun and follow me on Instagram. And good day to you, my friend. Uh, so that was just a really fun experience. And then his, uh, his uh, co-worker also talked with us for a bit. And it was just a whole lot of fun. Like, I never had fun at a vision place before, but that place was awesome. Um, anyways, it was uh, just a fun little thing to happen when you're wearing the hat. Sometimes people respond well, sometimes they don't. Um, but luckily today it was pretty damn good. Um, so yeah, today we're going to be talking to Kirk Brackman, Cosplay Fitness. Um, his alter ego, I, uh, I am Kevin Skinner, alter ego Kevin Deanna Jones, and let's have some fun. Kirk, uh, if you're out there, come on and join me, my friend. It'll be fun. I got the questions ready, the Kevin 11. Um, of course, if he's not ready yet, I will, of course, fill the time. I'm wearing my Dial of Destiny hat. Uh, this is... Uh, this is my second favorite hat. I'm pretty sure my last crusade hat is my favorite, but this one man it is wonderful. Hey, there we go uh, And it's Ferris Bueller you could say hello Tasha good to have you. Thank you very much. Yes, this this hat is just wonderful um, I guess there's a little delay. We're going through NASA satellites to talk to each other um, Unless it didn't work, but yes, thank you. Take a little bit is a beautiful hat. Thanks for watching, pal. It's good to have you. This is my Destiny strap also from um, Spade Archer. This is such a lovely thing. I don't really know how well it comes off. When I rewatch this afterwards, um, this uh, video quality is shit. So I'm hoping that when you're watching it now, it is of high quality. Um, but uh, oh boy, what happened here? Can I invite him through this? Yeah, he invited. I invited him. Oh, well, anyways. Well, we got some time. We have some time. Uh, so I have the Kevin 11 ready for him to get today. It'll be uh, not so goofy as last time because we're going to talk about some uh, other things beyond just the community. I keep on looking at the screen. Damn it, I want to look at you. Um, unable to join. Well, that's interesting. Um, I don't really, uh, let's see, no requests yet. Uh, I'm coming in clear. Okay, well, that's good to know. It just must be, it can only say 
save so much, I suppose. There we go. Yes, and go live with Cosplay Fitness. Good to see you, dude. My, uh, my fellow dudes. Oh, boy, it's good to have you. Uh, and uh, here he is, the fabulous... Oh, got to fix this. There he is, Kirk Breckman, Cosplay Fitness. How are you, pal? I'm doing well. Hello, how are you? I'm doing excellent, my friend. It's great to have you. Um, I did take an uh, allergy pill for the first time in years today, so I was a little sleepy going into this, but now I'm really livened up, and I'm glad to have you, buddy. It's, it's, you're my second guest ever, and I'm so glad it's you. I am honored to, I am honored to be your guest. Thank you. Once again, just like when I was talking to Caleb, it's weird to be talking to you directly on one of these videos because I'm used to just watching you talking to me. And um, it's a joy. It's like an honor. I know it's kind of silly to say with cosplay stuff, but it is an honor to have you. Like I said earlier, um, watching you on YouTube really, really inspired the hell out of me. And your attitude towards all this is just one of the best things that I've seen in all, in all the cosplay. Um, you know, people are really good at looking good, but you're also good at being good and it comes from, from inside of you and that kind of I, I i honestly every day i try to try to be a little bit of a better person because i'm like well kirk would do that so i'll, I'll do it that way i'll lift that i'll, I'll lift those weights because he would want me to i will lift that lady's wheelchair up onto the well i would do that anyway but there is inspiration behind you and from you so thanks for that first of all thanks for well, that thank you so much that means the world and right back at you you know like it's it's cool because i think with this community like i'm a fan of yours and so it's it's fun to hear you say that but it's it's cool because everyone's accessible like i'm fans of people that are becoming my peers and my friends and you know it's it's exciting because i i look up to you and you know like that like they say as iron sharpens iron so let man sharpen man so i feel like being in your company, being your friend makes me a better person, better cosplayer, you know, so I, I appreciate that. And I appreciate you. I appreciate the hell out of that, my friend. I mean, that's, uh, that means, that means a lot. Um, I am dry from all my dilation, but I would probably tear up otherwise had I not gone to that vision place. But, um, I would say, let's get started with this. Kevin 11, the 11 questions begin, my friends. So today we're talking about community. We're going to start with that. At least we're going to go into other things. How old were you when you, how old were you when you first got into the, uh, the cosplay? That's a good question. I, uh, I've kind of been into cosplay my whole life, even before that was a word. Um, my mother's a, a costumer. So she, oh, she went to, awesome. yeah, she went to college for uh, historical fashion design and so she was always doing uh, the costumes for plays and like film schools and renaissance festivals so for me I got really into movies through Indiana Jones um, and, but you know that extended into Planet of the Apes and Zorro and all these things and uh, so every Halloween my mom would ask me what I wanted to be and I would just come out of these you know left of center answers um just based on costumes that really grabbed me i remember when i was in I, you know i'm gonna age myself a little bit but when i was in third grade tim burton's planet of the apes came out and love or hate that movie i was i was taken by those costumes and i asked my mom to be a very specific chimpanzee from planet of the apes and she pulled it off um, radical so and then being in being in musical theater as i got older you know, costume is character. And so I always had an eye for costumes and, and things along those nature. And so they kind of just went hand in hand. And I've always been into kind of the nerdy things like Renaissance festivals, Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, and um, costume was a big part of that. But uh, I guess to answer your question, um, I started really getting into Indiana Jones officially, I would say in, uh, in 2003. Um, well, I was, I was always a fan, but that was when I went to Disney World for the first time and got my first Dorfman Pacific hat at the park. Um, Begin. Yeah. And then I wore that hat every day until I was 19. And I got my first, like, a, my first really nice fur felt Indiana Jones hat. That's fantastic. Um, that hat, I feel like, like, is such a gateway drug to all of this. Um, I, I had the, uh, the same, 
that I, maybe like a decade and I, it got eventually my, I got it when I was a teenager. So my head got too big for it, but I was never going to get rid of it. So I put it in the back of my car and that thing turned green from the sun. And I, I was just kind of proud of how that happened because I, that's something that would probably happen to Andy. He'd be like, eh, screw this hat and throw it in the back and it would turn green. Sure. And that, that was just the beginning of it all. And then I actually bought, was what's yeah no it was they're like they have two levels of them right there's like an okay one and then a better one right i think yeah there's there's like the the regular one which is like a synthetic felt and there's a crushable wool and i think they even have a fur felt one now but yeah there's there's different tiers of them i suppose that was the one that got me back into this it was just a simple halloween costume and boom now we're talking to each other and we're friends yeah so I guess you know at the end of the day, thanks Dorfman. You know, really, yeah. thanks, truly. There's there's some charm to it. Like we, you know, being the accuracy buffs, and and you know, we're always on that endless chase of accuracy. It's there's something there's something to be said about the humble beginnings of those Dorfman Pacific hats because, you know, and you can kind of say this with any piece of gear, regardless of how quote accurate it is or not. When when you receive it, if it is to you what you want it to be, then it's the greatest hat in the world. It doesn't need to be insert maker and insert style. It's when I first got that hat, that was Indy's hat, yep. you know, and, and it was mine and it was exciting. And I saw in that hat what I saw on TV. And over the years, you develop an eye for the details, but that was Indiana Jones's hat for me for the longest time. Absolutely. That, that's a really great thing that you said that because um, I remember. I mean, the more you learn, obviously, the more you're going to be more discerning on what's on you. But at the very beginning, all I had was like a, it was overly long, a wested jacket and um, that Dorpin Pacific. And that was plenty for me. That was that was perfect for me. I thought I was just done and I had my Indiana Jones costume. And so for anyone out there that does just have that, you are done. If you want to be done, you're done. You're, you're Indiana Jones already. So um, it's just, it's great that that we have that. That ability to start at a level where you can remain and still be a part of the community or you can have uh, higher tier stuff and you're st still part of the community. It, there's no really difference. And I think that's that's really a cool thing about this whole thing. Um, Absolutely. Way, please, please. Yeah, I was just going to say it's it's one of those things. And I think this is a commentary that's been said a couple of times now when compared to other fan bases. The indie is so the indie groups are so approachable and whether you're you've got the nicest newest stuff or you know just a, a goodwill leather jacket and that dwarfman hat you can that can be all and it's still enough absolutely and it's also really cool that we're also open with uh questions and uh just talking to people that you know it doesn't have to be limited to indie we can be talking about other things and that's kind of what I feel like leads to most friendships in this community beyond just, you know, having fun showing pictures, but actually having deeper talks is when someone's like, hey, you know, when I was a kid, this happened. And then someone's like, yo, that happened to me too. And then you find that link and then it just goes beyond all this. But it's just strange how so many of us out there um, have had, you know, interesting things happen to us in our lives that I don't know, lead to a was dressing like this but we all we all share that and that's just fascinating to me it's a hundred percent it's i feel like the indie cosplay i i said it when uh when california jones made me an honorary member just that this is like a a vetting process and you think about life explain experiences like a plinko game and it's funneling everyone down and then that last little rung is do you dress like indiana jones boom okay yeah. you're, you're a pre-made friendship and uh i stole this quote from morgan loft but you know, we were always friends. We just hadn't met yet. Yes, I love that. I love that saying. It's fantastic. And it's yeah. true. It's very, very true. Uh, um, what would you say your favorite part of the cosplay community is? Um, um, kind of piggybacking off of that, I think it's the friendships and connections I've made with people in the community and makers of the gear. Yeah, and, uh, yeah all, it's, it's, it's a unique and special type of friendship that... Again, that all those life experiences, you know, we could be on paper very different people, but we come together with this shared interest and we can break bread over it and learn from each other and become better human beings outside of cosplay. That was just the inciting incident. And I think yeah. that 
that was my favorite part is is the connections and the friendships because if all of the all of the cosplay went away i would still have you kevin i would still have all my friends that i've made and and the supportive group yeah talking daily it would have nothing to do with any we could it, like if indy was erased somehow but we still knew each other nothing yeah. would change we just yeah. wouldn't talk about indy so much but it's just so cool to have these connections that i, I i'm sure when many of of us do this we're not expecting that we're just expecting to have fun and maybe get some uh good comments or good likes on some posts and then it just builds from there and it's it's just it's a it's a kind of a blessing that um i feel like i i i will probably do this as long as i possibly can which is my next question how long do you think you'll do this for perhaps perhaps for always or do you see a point where you'd be like all right let's uh i'm good we're, we're done i don't i don't think there's there's ever going to be a point where i hang it up you know, and with cosplay in general, but I think one of the best gifts Harrison Ford gave us is cosplaying into, or cosplaying, but playing this character into his old age. Yeah. Because yeah. I remember a time when older cosplayers in this in this realm, there was a point where they're like, well, I guess I have to start doing, uh, doing Sean Connery because I've aged out of indie. But, you know, I, I think, you know, not to sound cheesy, but it's in here. It's not, you know, it's, it's that, that spirit is inside and Harrison just made it, just paved the way for us to do this well into our old age, maybe to the chagrin of some of our friends and loved ones, but like, it's, oh. it's something that, oh, well, yeah, we can carry with us and, and continue to be inspired <laughs> by well into our old age. Yeah. And, it's, it's quite convenient. And I would love to see you, like the future generations getting into it. And, you know, when I f first joined the Facebook groups, I was kind of the young, you know, bright eyed new guy who didn't know anything. And now I'm, you know, getting long in the tooth and can kind of help bring some of the young bucks under my arm and, you know, be like, oh, look at all these vendors of old and new. And, you know, and that's another exciting thing is I don't want to give it up because who knows who's going to be making hats and jackets and whips in 20 years. In the way that, you know, as we say, the fans are doing the best work. I'm excited to see what the fans in 10 years are doing. That's going to be next level. Absolutely. It'll be very interesting. I mean, people are still making stuff. I know that um, the Dark Matter Props is just creating a uh, Across the Coronado now that I saw, mm -hmm. uh, I think, uh, Sam Raff come out. Uh, he showed pictures of, and I cannot wait to get mine. Um, and it's going to be cherished. And the fact that it's just getting made now. I mean, sure, they exist. I can get them elsewhere. But just the fact that new versions of this are being made by new people this late on. I mean, it's 2024. That movie came out 35, 35 years ago now, I feel like. Uh, yeah, that's depressing. Um, but um, going, going back to what you said when you saw uh, Planet of the Apes in uh, third grade, I was a freshman in college. So <laughs> I'm a little longer in the tooth um but nevertheless it's uh it's 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 not it's not the years it's the mileage which we will come back to with that my friend <laughs> um so uh, kind of cool that you mentioned kids the next generation uh, getting into it uh tell me about your volunteer work yeah that's one of my favorite parts of my life um i uh i've been doing it now for five years huh? going on five years um it's it's incredible i without i guess the the long version of the story is um i i had just gotten out of the army and or the army reserves rather and that was always a, a, a very large part of my life even in my civilian life um i always put a an emphasis on being you know mission capable and you know, when I got out, it was kind of my time. And, and I struggled with finding the next mission. Um, because we're even the even playing the weekend warrior thing, I was always training for something, I was always motivated for something, and something that I felt was bigger than myself. And when I was working in, you know, just my normal job, and, and with nothing exciting to look forward to, you know, my time of jumping out of helicopters and blowing stuff up was over. And so I was looking at different opportunities to, you know, be a firefighter or EMT or something to give back. Cause I just felt like I had this need and this desire to 
do something. And, uh, and then, you know, I, I didn't really find that thing, but I went to a, uh, my, my local Denver comic con fan expo. Um, and there was a panel hosted, or uh, there was a, there was a panel that one of my friends from way back in the Renaissance festival days, uh, he was working and it was called cosplay for a cause. Uh, mm. and this friend uh, would dress up as captain America and just do good in the world. Um, before he started formally volunteering, he would just drive up and down the highway. And there was one story I love where he, uh, pulled out, he saw a car accident and there was like a mother and two kids and he, he would ride his motorcycle dressed like Captain America. He pulls over and hangs out with the kids while the mom is doing paperwork with the police and all that. And just that weight that was lifted off of the mom's shoulders, you know, he, he felt something there. And he, he spoke a, about- He was a hero in that moment, for sure. He was a hero, truly. Absolutely, 100%. Oh. And, uh, and so anyway, Anyway, he spoke about that. He spoke about um, an organization that means a lot to me called CAP for Kids, um, which is, uh, it's an acronym, Cosplayers Against Pediatric Cancer. And he would do these charity rides across America in, on his motorcycle and raise money for CAP for Kids. And this just blew my mind. And then um, another guy who became a really good friend of mine, Hospital Batman, talked about his experiences in the children's hospital, both as the parent of a patient, but then as a volunteer. And I'm sitting there, you know, weeping. I'm, I think I was dressed like Thor, but I'm sitting there, you know, crying my eyes out, thinking like, oh man, this is, this is it. This is the thing I've been looking for. Um, someone very close to me once said, take two or three things that you're better than most at and combine them into the thing you're the best in the world at. And I was like, this is what these cosplayers are doing because they're passionate nerds who want to make the world a better place. And they're cosplaying at a decently high level and they're giving back and they're, you know, it's not just look at me, look at my cool costume. It's, you know, look at me doing, or, you know, bringing attention to this cause and shame on me. I let a whole year go by before I ended up getting involved. And the next year at that same Comic-Con, um, I, uh, I, I got involved and it's been, it's been amazing. Uh, 2019, we got to do for uh, International Batman Day, we got to go into a into one of the children's hospitals and visit patients in their rooms. Um, that was amazing. And that was something that we haven't been able to do since COVID until this year. Um, but it's it's been extraordinary. And it's opened my eyes to a lot of a lot of really amazing and, you know, sometimes tragic, but heroic people and kids. And um, it just gives, you know, this a little bit more meaning and um it, it's you know if i'm if i know i'm gonna be thor coming up i can't miss a day in the gym it get, you know if i'm having a bad day it, it gives me perspective it 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 betters me as a human being just to be involved and then to be surrounded by my fellow volunteers being surrounded by that community of people is very inspiring and just it makes me want to be better every single day that's Simply extraordinary. Um, I have looked into, um, not too far, sadly, but I will look further into it. I, 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 you've inspired me so much that I've seen if New York City, I'm sure they do. And um, I would love to do something like that myself because when I see the things you post and those, uh, those kids around you, my God, it's just, it's magic. That's pure magic. And whether they think you're the real indie or not, it's just absolutely incredible that they have that opportunity to see someone like you in front of them and you're just there to make them feel good you're not there to make yourself feel good and that is uh that itself is heroic i feel um because uh it's uh not my next question but well, i'll make it my next question is it it's, so it's got to be really hard to not cry sometimes i would think doing this yeah I, it really is it's um you know that's kind of my not my, my warning but you know, people ask how to get involved in this. And, and I think it's a noble pursuit. Absolutely. And if you can do it and, you know, and it means that makes sense for you, but it's tough sometimes. And there was an event for a, a pediatric cancer a year or two ago. And a lot of times with those kinds of events, it, it's a walk, it's an awareness walk. So you show up at a park, a bunch of families and kids, and they all, you know, do this big fundraiser. And usually it's a really good time and they are, but I, I got my butt kicked by this one because I, I got complacent and was like, this is going to be a fun day dressed up. And, um, uh, you know, not, not 
to bring the mood down too much, but there were parents who had lost their children speaking um, and not to, to kick off the event. They were, they were speaking to it. And there were children who had survived, which is always, you know, you see those commercials on TV of kids that survived their cancer and it's this beautiful thing, but the parents are, the, are then living in constant anxiety um, that it'll come back. And the treatments that the children go through change them forever. They've won the battle, but there's this all there's this looming cloud of an impending war, and and that was that was tough. And you know, I think there is a narcissistic element to cosplay. You know, we like to see ourselves look good. We like to get the good picture, and there's nothing wrong with that. But for people right. who get into cosplay volunteering to get the cool picture in front of the children's hospital and stuff. It's sometimes there's there's an element that's hard and and that would just be my one I guess caution to the tale is just be prepared for that and um, you know going to rooms in the children's hospital and seeing sometimes not even the kids because they're still kids and they're so freaking strong but their parents are the ones who kind of have that detached perspective of the reality of the situation. Like they're yeah, kind of shell in the moment, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, and there's been times where I've I've broken down um, at events and I've had to kind of step out of the light and kind of, you know, come back and, you know, I'm Thor, I'm Indy or, you know, I'm Jack Sparrow. I got to soldier on. I got to I got to be the guy, but it's tough. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, that's the, that is kind of uh, I wanted to ask that in a way, like, would you have any sort of thing to say to someone wanting to get into this? So that was exactly what I was expecting you to say. So that's kind of want to ask, I asked it that way because I don't want it to have like a negative uh, uh, twinge on it uh, by any means, but there obviously will be a, a whole lot of emotions involved. But I feel like if we're doing this to begin with, we should be emotional people. To, um, so we should add that to the world in a way that even if you do have it, like you said, you got to soldier on, you got to fight on, you got to keep going. And that's kind of, um, it goes beyond all, all this. It, it's, it shows that you have the, the soul of, of what it takes to, to do stuff like this. And that's just awesome, man. It's just absolutely awesome. And I'm sure those kids see it. Um, what would you say the best reaction you've ever had from a kid is? Oh, that's a good question, too. Um, hmm. Uh, I, some of my favorite ones are uh, when I do Indiana Jones. Uh, for the young crowd, like if I know it's going to be a lot of young kids, usually I do Thor or Jack Sparrow or somebody who's more instantly recognizable. Right. But the, for the few kids who know Indiana Jones, they love Indiana Jones. And um, some of my favorite ones are uh, when I do parades. Um, like we'll do a parade around the perimeter of a children's hospital and you see all of them looking through their windows and stuff. I'll usually bring a whip uh, that I can crack and that, that always fires people up and gets them excited. Um, uh, yeah, I think some of those are, are my favorites. Um, or when I do Thor, um, you know, the, if they're worthy, the kids can lift the hammer and that always gets, just brings a really big smile oh, and, um, the best. I'd have, oh man! I'd have to think for a while on if there's a single, a single best moment. But anytime those kind of things happen, where the kids are smiling, the parents are smiling, um, that that really hits home. That that kind of you know, it's it's there's times where we raise money for charities, and that's huge because you can see you know a tangible number for for the work you're doing. And then there's times where you just make that connection. Um, oh. I got it. Uh, this last Christmas, uh, the Children's Hospital in Aurora, Colorado, they do um, a Make-A-Wish event. So kids that are part of the Make-A-Wish program, they, they can um, uh, get presents. They have like a Santa's workshop uh, in a room and uh, they get to pick out presents for all their family members. And I think something for themselves as well. And there was a kid that saw me when I was walking in from the parking lot and I, I was in costume and he basically hung out with me from the time I got in to the time that it was almost wrapping up and I had to leave. And this kid just, you know, I was Thor to this kid and he thought he had just made best friends with Thor and he could do a cartwheel. So he was showing me his cartwheels and, you know, <laughs> the Avengers and it was just a really special connection and, and something real. And I, I think so. 
something he'll remember, but certainly something I'll remember. I, <laughs> like I, it was, it was I, I don't doubt you'll remember it, but I have a feeling that he will always remember that for sure. Um, that's that's beautiful. That's simply beautiful. That's what an answer. Um, I'm sure there's many to choose from. I'm sure there's a, a data bank of awesome moments where, where that's happened. Um, who would you say that they re react to most positively the most of all the characters you do? Who, who, what, what gets the most reaction out of them all? Um, I haven't done it very often because I'm still kind of workshopping my cosplay, but uh, Captain Jack Sparrow uh, hmm. definitely, definitely gets the biggest reactions from children to adults. Interesting. Uh, even even little kids. Why do you think that is? That's very interesting. I think, you know, I think that character just changed the landscape for what we know of of pirates and the movies and the the Disney parks and the media surrounding it. You can't think of you you can't think of a pirate without thinking of you know a red bandana and dreads and the voice and the walk and it's yeah. I, I think that one that one definitely gets the strongest reaction. Uh, during during COVID on Memorial Day weekend, we were doing parades to kids um, that were uh, stuck at home, mm -hmm. that were being treated at home. So we went to visit them and did parades outside of their house. And there was one where we were staged up in front of someone's house um, and we had this convoy. And so we were all standing on Jeeps. And then uh, this guy's like, hey, Jack, where's the rum? I'm like, Oh, I'm out of rum, but I'm trying to avoid the Corona, Savvy. And this guy just pulls out a Corona and I, you know, chug it standing up <laughs> and, and, and the, you know, the crowd went wild. And, uh, but it was, it was crazy. Like it was crazy to have a reaction like that from a character. And um, so that, yeah, I would love for it to be indie, but again, the people that know indie and love indie, they react like that. But I'd say the masses love Captain Jack. That's so Oh, cool. I remember when that movie came out, um, it was just like, like we were that you could feel the audience was like, OK, what, what is what do you got? A, a movie based on a Disney ride. What is this going to be? I'm along for the ride, whatever. And then by the end of that movie, when it just cuts to the end credits with that ad, that music pumping, the audience cheered. We were all just like, what the hell did we just see? And it was like I could tell that that did kind of change things. And it, it sort of did for the action hero, for sure. It made him more um made made him more she more a, 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 able to be goofy you know like able to be not like a huge muscular person but someone that just knows they gotta right, do the right thing even if they're hammered and boy did that that really during college years that 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 answered a lot of questions so that was um that was an awesome character and so i'm, I'm also i'm really glad you do that one too that that that's a great impression you do but we'll come back to that later Mike. Thank you. Uh, as you've been warned um all right i did that one already um so to uh go into another little topic um tell me about your hat making when did you get into that oh, wow. oh. these are good questions kevin thank you <laughs> um i i got into hat making two years ago uh well i should say i started making hats two years ago i've been interested in hats and the making of them just as long as i've been cosplaying um when i was six i fractured my skull and ripped my forehead off um it was a yeah pretty gnarly injury and i had a plastic surgeon put my face back together so the scar was condensed to just this everyone sees like all the other scars but the really big one is the one you see the least um but the plastic surgeon uh informed me that i needed to keep the scar out of sunlight for a year or two so it didn't discolor um so i had to wear hats and i had special permission at recess uh at school to wear a hat um and so i started collecting hats and it's it's an easy thing it's an easy sell for a child that's obsessed with indiana jones and crocodile dundee and you know cowboys and stuff to oh you gotta wear a hat <laughs> say less um q dorfman pacific and all those other hats so i've loved hats and been obsessed with hats you know my whole life and when, hearing the story of steve delk and the adventure built hat company was really inspiring to me because they were fans that were not quite satisfied with what was on the market and you know uh, mark kidder and steve delk took ownership they were like ah oh, you know i want i want to make 
if I can't find it, I'm going to make it. And they became such elite hatters that they got the contract for Crystal Skull. And that's an amazing story. And um, uh, uh, I, I forgot how I found him, but there's a, there's a really amazing hatter named Nick Fouquet. And YouTube in its algorithmic wisdom was like, here, check this guy out. And I started watching his videos and he's a hatter out of uh, California and he has a couple other uh, uh, hatteries now. But I, I saw his process and there was just this art and this attention to detail and this care for making these wearable pieces of art. And the way he spoke about hats is how I always felt about them. I just didn't have the confidence to wear them. And then fold in the fact that us in the indie community, we have a lot of friends who started kind of following in the footsteps of guys like Steve Delk, who, um, you know, became master hatters. And, uh, you know, I, I remember distinctly years ago seeing Brian Lalonde of screen capped hats. He just started reblocking cowboy hats and turning them into, you know, very suitable or passable indie hats. Mm. And I, that was amazing. I didn't, I, I'd never thought you could do that. And, and that, that blew my mind and seeing him then, turn into a full-fledged hatter and all these other amazing hatters start cropping up and it just blew my mind and I'd after a while you start seeing the process done so many times that you're like shoot I might I might give that a crack if for no other reason just to say I did and um uh I I befriended a couple of hatters in Steamboat um the the Steamboat hatters and I was talking to my girlfriend because their, their hats are amazing and beautiful. And I was talking to my girlfriend about it. And I, I really wanted to buy one of their hats. And I was I, I forgot exactly how the conversation went. But essentially, I said, like, it would cost this much to buy one from them. And it would cost this, this much to get the felt and all the stuff I need to make a hat. What should I do? And she was like, well, you should just make it. <laughs> so I, I made my first hat. And, you know, I. It's, it's kind of unconventional because I think a lot of really good hatters apprentice under somebody or go to a, a workshop and actually learn and train under somebody. Um, I was kind of self-taught and I'm still always learning, but uh, I was just circling back to our community, really inspired by people in our community who just decided to give it a shot. And it, being in the indie community, there's surprisingly no gatekeeping everyone's very forthcoming with information and um whereas i think previously with traditional hatting or millinery and and making hats there is that gatekeeping it's kind of a secretive trade mm -hmm. um, so I, i've talked to hatters that are like you know how did you learn and i i tell them about, i'm self-taught and they kind of they, they think that's crazy but it's like oh i'm coming from a different world, a very niche world of, of hat making. Um, and again, I'm, I'm still learning every day, but uh, for the longest time, I didn't wear my own indie hats because I have hats like a Herbert Johnson or an Advantage or, you know, things that are on a very high level and that possess a little bit of magic. And because right. I was wearing my own hats, I didn't feel the magic because I knew all the warts in them, right? I knew how the sausage was made, but I finally made one that like, I actually, I actually like, and I feel like, you know, it's it's not an accurate color or anything, but I think it looks good on me. And so this has become kind of an everyday wear hat for me, you know, as if I was cast as Indiana Jones, this would be my hat, so. I like that one quite a bit. I would say that is a uh, quite a good fit for a temple. Yeah. A uh, temple of doom. Yeah. I am I am definitely a, a doomer mm -hmm. at heart. So, you know, my, my indie hat had to be, at least most of the DNA had to be infused with Temple of Doom. Your, your love for Temple of Doom definitely um, inspired me to, I mean, I'm sure I would have done all of this eventually, but I, I know that there weren't many Doomers out there, and I was like, well, I'm, damn it, I'm going to be one, because as I said last week, I love that movie so much, and it, there's so many different little uh, intricacies of the hat that makes it so unique versus the other ones that I feel like as a little kid, I think that was my favorite hat, as a matter of fact. Because um, I feel like whenever I drew Indiana Jones in like a cartoon version, it was always either that with, uh, it was basically that version with the a uh, little bit of a curl, and that to the point where he's wearing that in the Last Crusade poster. And I remember growing up and thinking, I want that hat, I want that hat, I want that hat. 
So there's something very special about the Temple of Doom. So I am with you on the love for that one because it's special to not all, but many. And uh, that makes us special, I feel. I don't know. Because we're... Uh... I'm, I'm, I'm incredibly biased, but I, I have to agree with you on that. Like, it's... I was, I was like a closeted doomer because when I, when I first got into the community, everyone would bash the, uh, you know, pun intended, bash the, uh, the doom hat. And everyone's like, oh, Raiders, Raiders is the hat. And so I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, Raiders is the hat. And that's why my friend loved that first hat. But my first hat was a Raiders hat. And it wasn't until, um, you know, I started putting together my Temple of Doom that I'm like, Temple of Doom is my favorite movie. Why don't I dress like that? You know, why, why, you know, why didn't I pursue that cosplay? And, um, and kind of when I, when I came out of the closet as a Doomer, I, I was more fulfilled as a cosplayer and, you know, now I'm a completionist. And so I'm trying to get all the, all the wardrobes together, but doom is hands down and always will be my favorite. And I think people are kind of opening up to that again, that the hat isn't always crazy tapered. It, Ooh. you know, it was just grabbed. And, and I think there's some beauty in each movie having a different look for a different story. And when you kind of lean into that, I love the story of Temple of Doom and the just the ridiculousness of it. It's 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 like the the contrast is turned up. Like when it's funny, it's really funny. When it's scary, it's scary. It's got the it's got the best action in all of them. Like they they in one continuous shot throw a raft out of a plane and it sticks it in it inflates and sticks the landing and no one talks about it. <laughs> like, there's there's got to be so many scenes behind the scenes uh, where the crew just goes yeah we did it where they just happen to make it happen and yeah. they were just like this this is the crap shoot who knows if that's going to work it's working it's working it's working you're filming right i feel like that is uh, happens a lot in these indiana jones movies and particularly doom with that scene and just a bunch of other scenes like it seems like it was a pretty intense film to make um and that kind of adds to the whole love factor for me i mean the the last Pretty much half hour. That's the best climax in any in any any of the Indiana Jones movies by far. It's and it's, it's got a legit because uh you know you there's it's got the happiest ending of all of them. It goes to the darkest places, but you know him and Willie aren't gonna stay together. But he gets the girl. She doesn't fall into a pit, and he's like on to the next adventure with you know it, 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 the the village. It ends with applause and children and. It's it's a very happy and satisfying ending. Whereas like sometimes I got to be in an emotionally stable place to watch Last Crusade, you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> like I got. Oh yeah, for sure. You know that that one hits the feels sometimes. Sometimes I just want some popcorn, cheese, and you know a good time and to have a smile on my face. And that's what Doom brings to the table. Absolutely. Oh my god, I might watch it tonight just for talking about that. <laughs> Um, anyway, going going back to the hat making, is there a, a hat you've wanted to be uh, you've wanted to make but you haven't yet? Yes. Well, there's a couple of them. Um, mm -hmm. So I've, I've I've remade this hat twice, and I haven't. I, I in my heart of hearts, I have not nailed it. It's my crocodile Dundee hat, and mm -hmm. um, it's one of those. It's a very simple hat, but I want to make it perfect for me. Um, and then uh, the some of the other ones are like ones that I have in my collection, but I would love to replicate. Um, it's not, it's not a great movie, but it's a, it's a guilty pleasure movie for me. Van Helsing with Hugh Jackman and Kate Beckinsale. It, uh, it has some of the best costumes of any movie ever. Um, and I have Van Helsing's hat made by the people who made it for the movie. Um, wow. and I would love wow. to replicate it. It's, it's made out of lamb suede. Um, so it's a, it's a leather hat, but it looks like felt. And I would love to make it okay. out. Um, uh, that one uh, for Mickey B uh, Bukowski, who's a Temple of Doom cosplayer. Yeah. I made a Doc yeah. yeah, I made a Doc Holiday for hat uh, a Doc Holiday hat for him, and I want to uh, make one for myself to kind of work out some of the things I think I could improve on, and then make a 2.0 for him as well. Um, so yeah, I love I love replicating film hats. I'd love to make a cowboy hat for myself that is just a an original design. Um, I think uh, a Drover's hat from the movie Australia, another Hugh Jackman hat, that would hmm. be a fun one. Um, I never saw that. Is that any good? It, it's pretty, 
pretty good. It's a, oh. uh, I think on Hulu or something, they just released it in a six part series version. Um, oh. But it's, it's good. It's very stylized. It's Baz Luhrmann. So it's got a lot right. of, uh, but it's, it's like part Western, uh, part war movie, romance. It's, it's got something for everybody. So if you haven't seen it, it's worth a watch. Oh. Check that out. That sounds pretty cool. Huh. I don't know why I haven't watched that. Because I, I do like Baz Luhrmann. He's, uh, he's unique for sure, but he, uh, he does not make a, a, an uninteresting movie, that's for sure. They are never boring. Um, so, bu, 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 bu. well, we're already there. Huh. Well, we, we flew through these. Um, we're going to go back to mentioning before, it's not the years, honey, it's the mileage. Um, and you're Matthew McConaughey in person. This next question is not really a question, my friends, but it's more of a sequence of events that you're probably all going to roll your eyes at, but we're going to have a lot of fun doing. Um, so we're just going to say it's not the year, Sonny, it's the mileage and different vo voices of different celebrities and characters and actors and all that. So please, Matthew McConaughey, lead the way. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Got to warm up and kind of, you know, no, probably got to get your no, no, no. <laughs> I'm thinking about the years. It's, uh, it's not the years. Uh, it's the mileage. <laughs> you really have to tell you something. It's not the years. It's the mileage. Honey, wow. listen to me. Wow, you're talking to me in the wrong tongue. It's not the years. It's the mileage. That's pretty damn good that's pretty fun. <laughs> pretty damn good it's, um uh barney from the simpsons uh oh it's not it's not actually this could be barney or ray romano i suppose it's not the years honey it's the mileage oh i added the i of the r to make it ray all right that's ray who the hell do you think you are it's not the years it's the mileage boy i'll tell you what it's not the years honey it's the mileage we've already Heard a little bit from Captain Jack, but I'll tell you one thing. It's not the years, Savvy. It's the mileage. Well, I'll tell you something, Maggie. It's not the years, honey. It's the mileage. Hey, Mike. <laughs> oh. It's not the years. It's the mileage. Uh, wait. How do I get into this one? Uh, oh, 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 it's not the years, honey. It's the mileage. It's not the years, Junior. It's the mileage. It. Uh, it is not the years, honey. It is the mileage. <laughs> we do these th things not for the years, <laughs> but for the mileage. We do this for the mileage in this decade, not because it is easy, but because it is hard. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm like strolling through the Rolodex, like, what impressions do I do? I've I feel like that's a, that's a good, if that's all we came up with immediately, <laughs> let's leave it at that. Let's stop there. Um, my friends, I just want to once again thank you for being my second guest on the show ever. And uh, for all the inspiration you do, you are such a good dude. I can't wait to meet you in person. That's going to be a ridiculous time. There will be thunder and lightning when we shake hands. Um, you are a, uh, you're, you're one of the, the, the best parts of my life, I got to say. You are a, a joy to know and to talk to all the time and to see what you do and how you do it. and Thanks. Thanks, man. Thank you. Brother, thank you. I, everything you just said, not to, not to give you a cop out, but right back at you, man. You are so inspirational, both with who you are as a person, as a cosplayer for the community. I think you're, it, it'd be very easy to, to take a bad path and you and you inspire us to take a good path and, and to, you know, be a beacon of, of positivity in this community and to keep that ball rolling. So we, we're always a good, keep that boulder rolling of, uh, of positivity. And I cannot wait to meet you. It's going to be a, a, a great big hug. We'll knock the wind out of each other, but I, I cannot wait. And thank you so much for having me as a guest. This was a blast. Absolutely, my friend. Thank you. Um, the, the positivity thing, it's important to me. It's always been important to me since I was a little kid. Um, my parents divorced when I was 10 and I had already used humor to, to make things better. But when that happened, I just went right into it. And I could see being positive made things better, even if not for everyone, for many people. So I just saw from then on, that's who I got to be. That I, and it just, it's just, it's once you do it, it sticks. Even if I got to fake it, it becomes real. If, 
if I wake up in a bad mood and I fake being nice, guess what happens? I become nice. And uh, it's just the power of positivity is all around us. We just got to access it and spread it around. And you do that all the time. Thank you. Thank you, brother. That, that means the world. Right back at you. You're the best, man. Have a good night. I'll talk to you soon. Hey. God bless. Fortune and glory, man. Fortune and glory. <laughs> Cheers, man. Thank you. Cheers, buddy. Thank you. Oh, well, that was really damn good. Uh, uh, folks, I don't really know how much longer I got, but I feel like I'm going to cut it short tonight. Why drag it on? That was good. That was really good. I love talking to these people. I'm going to talk to many, many more people in the uh, community. If you want, um, I have many, many months ahead. If you can believe it, I am booked for the next couple months, which is fantastic. I don't want to give away everything, but I will say next show, whether I do it next week or the following week, like I said, I may take off next Monday just to be lazy and fantastic. Uh, thank you for that. That was fantastic. I said fantastic. I'm going to be fantastic, obviously, but someone said that was fantastic. Thank you so much for that. Uh, that means a lot. That means a whole lot to me. This is just a joy. This is so fun. I say this is a joy and something else and all that a whole lot of times. I got to like leave words written on my little cabinet here. It's like alternatives to say other than something else and it's a joy. But regardless, with, I, I can't wait till next week. I guess I'm not going to take off next week. Now I really want to do this again where my guest will be another, other than the wonderful Nathan. Well, sorry, I had to do that right then. Nathan Smith. Um, we're going to be talking Last Crusade, which is my favorite movie of the Indiana Jones uh, Chronicles, if you can call them that. And it's going to be a blast. Boy, oh boy, I tell you what. Boy, oh boy, I tell you what. This is going to be a good time. If you bring some propane to that show, we're going to make some nice bratwurst. We're going to do whatever we need to do. Uh, that's it for me, folks. Thank you so much for watching. You're the best. I appreciate you all. And I'll see you soon with some uh, hopefully cool pictures. Yeah, hopefully they're cool. Hopefully you like them. Bye, everyone. Have a good night.